Hello, good morning everyone. I want to talk about analytics. Analytics means analyze um, any situation. This started from the stock market. People, you know, from the early earliest times wanted to predict the stock market. You know, what's going to happen? If it is going to go up, then you buy stocks. And if it's going to go down, then you, you sell. So all kinds of methods were generated, Elliott Wave method, uh, Pitchfork method, and um, all these methods were de developed in 1900s, 1920s, um, mean average, and etc. But lately, um, in 1970s, there are more and more mathematically oriented methods, such as the Monte Carlo method, uh, Brownian motion, Ito calculus, all that. So then what happened was these mathematics that people were using for the stock market, the options, various markets, now they are using for sports. So um, I looked, I wanted to do a little simulation for the cricket match that is coming up, um, SL versus England. And I'm recording this on January 13th. I think the match is going to start in a few days. So how are we going to how are we going to simulate a cricket match using these analytical mathematics? So I thought about it, and basically we have to find what is the possible score that England and Sri Lanka would score. So there are two innings. So this is how I went about doing it. This is the most simplest way. So you have all the batting averages of the batsman. So you get the batting averages. And each person has a standard deviation. Um, standard deviation is a function of how much he would score in a given day and how much it would vary from the mean score. Let's say someone has an average of 30, but he would score 100 one day and he would have five zeros for next five games. So that would have a high, that play would have a high standard variation, standard deviation. And there would be another person who all, will always get, he's not going to get hundreds, he's not going to be zero, he's always like 30, 35. You know, standard deviation is low. So there's an equation for that, x minus mu squared day sigma, all, all that. You could you could uh, look up in a static stick book. So you get the standard deviation. In this case, I don't have the standard deviation of each player, so I just assumed 40%, you know, which is seems to be reasonable. And then I added 5% for the home team advantage for the Sri Lankan team. That seems to be reasonable, but if I want to improve it, I could get the average as home average, but I did not, I did not do that. I just got the regular average that is shown on uh, Crick Info. We have here uh, Anderson, he got, uh, he's a bowler and his average is low. Um, so I got it from the cricket, uh, Crick Info. So you have the averages, you have the standard deviation, and you could find the total possible score. Oh, also I deducted 5% from the England team since they're playing away. And 5% seems to be pretty okay. Um, when you're playing away, you, you get a little lesser score. Away averages, almost most cases, are lower than the home average. So you find the score for the batsman. Now, this is not enough. There's bowling side. If the other side is a good bowling side, even if you have a good batting side, let's say we have a good batting side, but other side has people like, um, I don't know, Dennis Lilly or somebody who very good, and then we may not be able to score on. So you have to look at the score based on England bowling averages. So find the SL score based on England bowling average and find the England score based on England bowling average, the Sri Lankan, okay, 
find the England score based on Sri Lankan bowling average. It should be small mistake here. So now what we are going to do, we are going to obtain the mean number. The mean, uh, that would be the number based on batting average and the based, let's say for instance, we want to get the Sri Lankan mean number, then what we would do is we would get the Sri Lankan number based on the Sri Lankan batting averages. And then we would get the England uh, Sri Lankan number based on the England bowling average, England bowling average. And then similarly, we would get the England score based on England batting average. Plus, we would get the England score based on Sri Lankan bowling average. You have to understand that. And then you get the mean number, and then you compare the score. And this is the sheet that I did. So let me center this. So SL team, DK, Dimut Karnarana, and other people, I just gave the initials. So we have the averages. This is the adjusted average. I added 5% for the home. And then this is the standard deviation. And then the we could we could put F9 and then you would this this equation would give you the normalized value uh, based on this standard deviation and the average. So similarly I could do the same thing for the England team, Joe Root and all these people here. And you could get the um, batting average. And then I found the SL team score based on England bowling average. And England team score based on SL bowling average. So you, have, you could get the mean score here. So, and then, and I ran this simulation. And I just ran 16 times. And then, uh, you know, I have one. It threw, throw out one in case England wins. And in all 16, England is winning. I, there's no, the Sri Lanka cannot win in this uh, this type, in this simulation. Let's try F9. Every time I press F9, these numbers change. See, this is SL score, this is England score. Let's try F9 again. 319, 341. 290, 319. England comes up top. 265, 320. So, looks to me like it's there's a big talent gap difference. Now, of course, there are assumptions here. I assume the standard deviation. I guess, you know, standard deviation for each batsman would be different. And I assume 5% home advantage. Maybe it could be more than 5%. And, well, the bowling also same. You know, there could be a better average because the you know, game is played on a spinning wicket and I don't know how this England spinners are going to perform. But, um, you, you know, those are the improvements that you can do. You could try to get the averages for that particular ground. You know, if somebody really wants, now that's what the bookies do. When they run simulation, they would get the averages for that particular ground. And some players may never have played on that ground, and then they would what they would do is they would get the averages for similar grounds. How the person, let's say, I'm just throwing out a number here, say Joe Root, you know, he has never played in golf, but they would try to figure out how would he, he scores from another ground that is kind of similar to the golf spinning wicket. So that type of analysis and unfortunately all my simulations England is winning I did 16 here let's do another one here when you press F9 it simulates 265 335 because this okay now it gets closer 300 307 268 the, the gap is I think to have a viable chance of winning you need to be better in at least in bowling or in batting. If you are not good in both departments, in this case seems to be the situation. It's very difficult to win according to this simulation. Um, okay. Oh, by the way, um, unfortunately, I cannot think how I could do a Brownian motion for this. 
because we really don't have a Brownian motion. So you cannot model with Brownian motion. You could do only statistical calculation, which we call Monte Carlo analysis. Um, because you need to have a time step. There is no time step. You have a number and bunch of numbers and with the statistical dis distribution. Um, and um, so I hope you understood something, how to do a um, simulation for a cricket match. And there could be more improvements can be, can be done, which you could think of. And um, thanks for listening.